Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is an assembly video, uh, as well as a demonstration video. I made a video a few days ago for this. This is uh, our infrared detector with relay control. It has two modes, latching and momentary. Um, please check uh, the end of the video for a demonstration, uh, or check out our other video, which gives a full demonstration. We'll be assembling one of these from scratch in just a second. Uh, I just wanted to mention that it comes with some neat features. You can connect your own power supply via this terminal block there's a ground and positive input you need seven to nine volts to run it uh... this in module and kit form will come with an ac adapter which you plug it in uh... plug and play nine volts at uh... one thousand milliamps or one amp rather um, and you can take the infrared uh... signal coming from the infrared detector and splice it off here to your other microcontroller there's an ir pad uh... rather a pad labeled ir and a ground pad. So the, there's the onboard relay that you control. There's three outputs, uh, common, normally closed, and normally open. If you know how to use a relay, you can uh, use those three uh, terminals to control AC devices. And uh, yeah, the two modes are determined by the state of the connector here. If you have uh, the COM pin shorter to, to the ground pin, uh, you're in non-latching mode, momentary mode, and if you have the Comp pin connected to 5 volts, you're in latching mode. So let's put it one together. This is what comes with the kit. The uh, 9 volt adapter is not uh, shown here, but it does. it is included. I'll show you that later. Uh, 5 volt relay, custom PCB, 2 pin header connector, 3 pin header, uh, 2 pin terminal block, 3 pin terminal block, a uh, 1N4001 diode, an LED 3 millimeter, uh, IR infrared receiver, 8-pin microcontroller with socket underneath, uh, 7805 5-volt regulator, two electrolytic 100 microfarad capacitors, a single ceramic 0.1 microfarad capacitor, a 1K ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, and a 10K ohm resistor, uh, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, and a 5mm power jack. So for power on this, you actually have two options. You can use a terminal block and use wire connections, or you can use the 9-volt uh, adapter. So anyway, first of all, why don't we concentrate on our uh, capacitors and resistors. The electrolytic capacitors are both rated for 100 microfarads. Uh, each of them have a long lead and a short lead. This means they're polarized and they have a polarity. So the long lead is your positive, your short lead, lead is your negative. And they go into the C6 and C5 slots, labeled C6-100U for 100 micro and C5-100U for 100 micro. Now, on both of them, there is a plus sign on one of the leads. In the case of C6, the positive, uh, the plus sign is on the, the bottom hole, and on C5, the plus sign is to the right of the top hole. You want to place your long leads in those holes, the ones with the plus signs beside them, and the short leads in the uh, holes adjacent to them. Uh, if you reverse the polarity when you power it up you risk popping them and that won't be good for anybody so make sure that you uh, long leads right beside the hole with the, pot with the plus sign. The ceramic capacitor labeled uh, uh, 104, the capacitor itself has a 104 on it, is a 0 0.1 micro microfarad ceramic capacitor and that goes in the C7 slot right here. There's no polarity, both leads are the same length, just make sure that uh, you solder it nice, nicely and firm down on the board. The three resistors go in the R1, R4, and R2 slots. Now, R1 is labeled R1, 1K, so place your 1K ohm resistor there. R2 is labeled R2, 470R, 470R for 470 ohm, place your 470 ohm resistor there and R4 is labeled R4 10K, so place your 10K on resistor there. Don't mix up the values, but again, resistors don't have a polarity, so you don't have to worry about uh, about turning it a certain way. Solder them flush down to the board, and once you're done that, uh, we will move on to our diodes, our header connector, and our, our, our three-pin header and our header connector. Both the 1 and 4001 diode and the LED have a polarity. Uh, the LED like the capacitors, there's a long end and a short end. The long end is your positive or anode. Your short end is your negative or cathode. On the diode, there is a white stripe on one side. You might not be able to see it from here, but there's a distinct white stripe on one side. That is your negative, cathode, and the black side is your positive, anode. So for the LED, that will go into our 
LED1 slot. Now, the negative side, the short end, will face the uh, electrolytic capacitor here. Uh, on the board, it's labeled LED1. The, side, the hole facing the LED1 footprint is your negative, so place your short lead there and your long lead facing the bottom of the board from this perspective. Don't reverse it or your LED indicator will not work. As for the diode, on the board, D1 labeled 1N4001, um, on the top hole there is a stripe. It might be difficult to see, but there is a stripe on the footprint. That's where your negative goes. So from a bird's eye view, make sure that the white stripe on the diode faces the upper lead here. Um, if you reverse that, when your relay goes off, you'll cause a short circuit and your system will reset. So, from a bird's eye view, match the stripe on the diode to the stripe on the D1 footprint. And then, of course, the black side will face the bottom here. Place the black side in the bottom hole. It is very easy. If it sounds difficult, trust me, when you actually see that these components up close, it's very easy to understand. As for the three-pin header connector, that is placed right here. Place the short leads into the board so that the, top, the long leads are facing the top side of the board. Solder them into place. Make sure there's no shorts. And once you're done, uh, just, for, uh, to, just for the sake of making sure that you keep your two-pin header connector uh, connected to the left two pins, labeled 5 volts and COM. COM is for common. Uh, we have two modes here, so uh, if you short COM to 5 volts or COM to ground, we get two modes of operation. We'll get to that in a minute. So solder those into place. Next, we'll do our 2N2222 transistor, our terminal blocks, and our power jack. The transistor has a flat side, a flat front with writing on it, and the back side is curved. So you can actually see if I tilt it, it starts to wiggle. <clears throat> the front side, which has writing on it, will face the bottom side of the board. Now the footprint is labeled T1 2N2222, and there is a curved side and a flat side. The flat side is facing the bottom of the board. From a bird's eye view, make sure that you place the transistor in uh, with the flat side of the transistor facing the bottom of the board, facing the, the flat side of the footprint. If you reverse this, then your uh, relay will not work when the relay is supposed to be activated. Make absolutely sure that the flat side from a bird's eye view is facing, facing the flat side and that the curved side of the transistor is facing the curved side on the board. So, next, uh, the terminal blocks and the power jacks. They're very, very easy. Just one thing you want to remember for the terminal blocks. There is a terminal side and there is a plastic side. Make sure that your terminals are facing outside of the board. Otherwise, uh, you'll never be able to wire in your connections. And once you solder them into place, it's very difficult to desolder. So be very careful. Make sure that the terminals are facing outside. Your two-pin terminal block goes here. Your three-pin terminal block goes here. Your three-pin power jack only fits in one way. The jack side should face outside of the board. And there are three pins. Uh, you don't have to go overboard on the soldering here. Uh, don't apply too, too much heat or else you'll melt the jack. Just to get, make sure that all three connections are actually made and that the uh, jack is flush to the board. After this, we'll solder in our 8-pin uh, we'll socket, place our microcontroller, and we'll solder our infrared detector. The infrared detector has three pins and a window side. That's the sensor side. On the back, there's some writing. That's the, uh, that's the back side. Um, on the footprint, <coughs> right here, labeled IR, make sure that the window side is facing the top side of the board and that the back side of the sensor is facing the bottom of the board from this perspective. Don't turn it around or else as soon as you power it up you'll fry your infrared device. So that's the window. Make sure it's facing this side of the board. Solder it flush down onto the board, straight up at 90 degrees. Uh, as for the socket and the pick, the, pic, the microcontroller, uh, it's placed in the IC2 slot. IC2 is an integrated circuit. Now, on the top of the footprint, not sure if you can see it, there's a little notch, a little notch on the footprint. And on the socket, there's a notch on the left-hand side, and on the pick, there is a notch on the left-hand side. So you want to make sure that the notch, from a bird's eye view, matches the notch on the board. It's very important for orientation. Once you've soldered that in, make sure that there's no shorts, um, and that is flush to the board. Once you're done that, you can place the microcontroller in with the notch facing the top side of the board, facing the notch on the socket and on the footprint. Now, if you turn that around and get the orientation wrong, as soon as you power it up, goodbye microcontroller. Keep that in mind. So solder those into place. Uh, place your microcontroller carefully into the socket. And uh, lastly, we will place our relay and our 7805 5-volt regulator. And then we'll run a test. 
The relay is easy. It's got three leads on one side and two on the back. The slot right here, labeled 5 volt relay, has three pins in the front, two pins in the back. So place the uh, relay in, 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 make sure that it's flush to the board, and add a, a he healthy amount of solder to each lead. It should flow quite easily. The 7805 goes in the slot labeled IC1. Uh, and if you can see from here, it might be difficult. The uh, There's a white stripe facing the microcontroller. On the back side, that's actually indicating the, the back of the, of the 7805. This side, or rather, this side. This is the back, and this is the front. The front has a, a, a black uh, chip side on it with writing on it. Make sure that the front side is facing the power jack, like so and that the back side is facing the microcontroller. If you uh, reverse the polarity on that, you will not regulate to 5 volts and you, can likely, you will likely destroy your chip. So make sure the orientation is, is, uh, is, is proper there. Uh, solder it flush to the board at 90 degrees and then we'll run a test. I've got the COM pin shorter to 5 volts so I should start in toggle mode. I should see the LED blink once. There we go, it's ready. So I'll use my trusty remote off, on, off, and I'm pretty far back, I'm, I'm at least three meters. So now I'm about four meters back, on, and off, there we go. So as we've, you've already seen the demonstration, but what I can do is I can plug in uh, ground to calm, unplug, wait a second, plug back in, LED should blink twice, and now we'll be in non-latching mode. So I'll hold down my button and I'll let go and I'll press it again and I'll let go. Non-latching mode. Uh, momentary mode. So thanks for watching. Uh, we have another video contrasting all of the different options here. I forgot to mention, uh, as I talked about in the intro, the uh, if you want to just see the output of the infrared uh, detector, you can connect here. There's a ground pad and an IR pad, uh, or rather a pad labeled IR. So you can just use your oscilloscope or use uh, your microcontroller to basically steal the infrared signal coming from your controller. So thanks for watching. Uh, this can be found at engineeringshot.com, electroniclessons.com, uh, in both kit form and assembled form. Take care, guys.